Good. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour through the landscapes of trade, uh, a PhD research project at the Delta Metropolis Association in collaboration with the TU Delft and Erasmus School of Economics. Um, the project is about the logistic complex and uh, what I understand uh, for that is a combination of the transport infrastructure and the logistic buildings. And as you can see in this image, these two are very intertwined and uh, work together uh, on a 24 seven basis all the time. Um, it's a, a very uh, logical actually um, topic for the Netherlands. Uh, it's very much part of the Dutch culture and the Dutch economy logistics. And since the 1980s, we've uh, also had uh, very strong policy narratives and spatial policies to turn the Netherlands into a distribution country or a gateway to Europe. Um, also, these uh, these warehouses and distribution centers are not something from yesterday. We've had them for a long time. Here uh, you see some pictures of the 50s. Uh, and in essence, these buildings also haven't changed much. We still do more or less these things in them. Uh, but what, what has changed is the way we use them and, and the scale on which we use them. Of course, um, changed by the, the large uh, e-commerce platforms that we've also started to use more during the COVID crisis recently. And uh, things like cloud computing and other technological changes. Uh, so that's also behind a big change in scale uh, of the logistic complex. Uh, at the moment, in the Netherlands, uh, we increase the logistic complex by 3 million square meters per year in these kinds of buildings. And that also um, has some reactions in society. Uh, people actually uh, increasingly have these things in their face, built in their face, and uh, they start protesting against them and also against the negative externalities of these developments. So, for example, um, the congestion, emissions, uh, but also uh, the blocking of the view and uh, actually the taking up of space, which could be used for other functions uh, alternatively. Uh, and that this thing is a really a Euro Delta topic, I think is very clear. It's very much uh, transborder. Uh, for example, if I uh, order a package today, uh, I will uh, change something uh, in the light pollution and in the congestion in the Czech Republic tomorrow, or vice versa, uh, I will induce people from Bulgaria and from Poland to actually come to the Netherlands and work here in a distribution center, something related to the research of, of Siren just now um, about um, labor migration. Um, is logistics then bad? No, I think that's a very common mistake in the, um, the current discussion about it. I think we need uh, logistics very much to become uh, a circular economy. Uh, in this image, for example, uh, you see a place where smartphones uh, are refurbished. And these kinds of activities are only possible in logistic networks. So how did I structure my research? Um, I basically broke it up into two parts. And the first part, um, I tried to understand the apparatus of the logistic complex. So uh, how was it planned since the 1980s, spatially? Um, how uh, does the, do the stakeholders uh, work to build this logistic complex and the warehouses? Uh, what are their motives and interests? Um, and what is the spatial economic pattern of the logistic complex and how has that changed? Uh, and uh, this knowledge can be used in the end also to give suggestions uh, to policy and design of how to build a better and more sustainable logistics complex in the Euro Delta. So this, this map, I think you, you've seen a few times already today and this week. Uh, I like it very much, um, especially also because of the, uh, it actually highlights uh, a central thought in the Euro Delta discussion that these purple areas are very important. Uh, and the topic I'm working on actually plays out a lot in the areas in between the so-called hinterland. Uh, which are rather empty in this map. Um, it's, of course, a Euro Delta topic, uh, the, the landscapes of trade, not only because of the 10T transport corridors or the global value change, uh, but also uh, because there are very strange border effects going on in the Euro Delta. Uh, there are slight changes uh, or um, variations, let's say, uh, among countries con uh, concerning the tax policy or labor conditions or the building of hubs. 
um, and com yeah, in that way, the, the countries compete between each other. For example, in Venlo, in the southeast of the Netherlands, the biggest rail terminal of Europe is being built at the moment, only 60, 60 kilometers away in Duisburg, uh, they're doing the same thing. Uh, so from a Euro Delta perspective, that's, that's not um, effective. It's also not sustainable. Uh, so why can't we think of that um, in a common way? This is the, the hinterland complex I'm uh, talking about. Uh, Paul already showed this image as well. It's uh, the, the corridor, the big transport corridor from the port of Rotterdam to the German hinterland, um, uh, where I do my research in. Um, you can also find this map in, um, on the internet and browse in it a bit yourself. Um, what you can see here is that uh, from the 1980s, there is a, a big growth of logistic locations. Um, and it has also become more scattered a lot. And you can also see that when you zoom into certain logistic locations, such as Venlo, that they started out with actually almost no logistic activity in the 80s and really become a big cluster. So actually Venlo is an, um, an example of a good cluster. Uh, but if you zoom out, there is also a lot of confetti kind of development going on in the region. Uh, so growth is one big aspect of it. Um, in, since the 1980s, the logistic complex increased its footprint by about 400% in this area. And also the size of a typical warehouse uh, increased by 400% in the last 10 years only. Um, besides the data, I also try to look at um, the stakeholders themselves. So why do things happen the way they happen? Uh, and to do that, I zoom into two case study areas and I really talk to uh, people uh, of which uh, a lot of assumptions are made by planners, but we rarely actually talk to them. For example, the big real estate uh, developers and investors uh, from the international markets, uh, but also local uh, workers in the distribution centers or local planners. So this is uh, one of the cases in um, Rosendaal. And this is another case in Venlo. And these big boxes kind of look the same and they are largely the same everywhere. They're very standardized, but uh, the way they are integrated in the landscape is actually very diverse. So for example, here in, in Venlo, they included also a nature network with wetlands and also a recreational network. And that doesn't happen anywhere, uh, everywhere. Um, and you might think that, um, or generally it is thought that um, the logistic companies are responsible for these whole developments. So there's a lot of criticism going their way. Uh, but if you ask all the stakeholders involved, you get a much more diffuse picture. This is a heat map um, picturing uh, the influence by the different types of actors. And then you get a picture of um, a really complex uh, and wicked problem that you cannot tackle with just one law or one project. So it's actually something uh, you can only solve when you understand and try to understand the system. So what would I suggest uh, to do on the Euro Delta scale? I think there's a lot of things we could do together. Uh, we could broaden our knowledge base um, so we can do more policy learning and share these experiences. So we have to rely also less on uh, the technical silver bullets from the market. Uh, we should combine better the sustainability concepts in both the logistics discipline and spatial planning discipline. These are too much disconnected at the moment. Um, I think uh, instead of trying to become um, a, a distribution country in the Netherlands, it would be much better to think of a Euro Delta storytelling. So what uh, can we still what can we tell as a story for our delta uh, of how we produce, consume, and move things around? Um, and of course, in the world of governance and laws, there's a lot of ways together that we can eliminate perverse incentives and also increase uh, multi-level governance and industry standards to um, provide better logistics developments. And I think research, doing research is not enough. I think we need a broader discussion around this topic as well. And that's what we've been trying to do also at the Delta Metropolis Association in collaboration with partners 
for example, here in 2019, a debate on XXL logistics with the Board of Government advisors. Um, and um, last year, the design challenge out of the box, uh, together with the Architecture Center of Tilburg, including experts, design teams, and local politicians in the discussion. These are the outcomes of uh, some of these uh, design teams uh, who look, took a look at uh, what the sustainable logistic landscape of the future could look like. And I think it's also to close uh, my presentation, it's important to look at um, good practices uh, in the Euro Delta and beyond. For example, this is a, a project in Paris of a uh, sustainable freight hub uh, based on rail transport uh, with on top of it uh, the development of housing, offices, urban uh, agriculture and sports. So that is something uh, I think we could learn a lot from in the Netherlands to, to use our space better and uh, also make it work for the, uh, for the neighborhood as well. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, go to the website. Inf unfortunately, it's in Dutch still, but um, increasingly I'm also producing English content there. Uh, thank you for listening and back to Alan Krita, I think.